everyone and welcome back to my channel. I've got a little helper today, he's decided that he will not leave my side while I film the intro, although it seems to be boring him quite a lot. But anyway, today's video is a really, really exciting one because it's going to be my first impressions, kind of tutorial, although not really because I've not used them before, of the Estee Edit. So in case you haven't heard, the Estee Edit is a new range of products from Estee Lauder aimed at us millennials. So 18 to 25 year olds, the social media generation, and quite a appropriately the face of this range is Kendall Jenner who launched the range in Selfridges a couple of evenings ago. So I have quite a selection of the products to try for you. The whole range has I believe 82 products within it which is a mixture of skincare, a small amount of skincare and a lot of beauty products which have really been designed with the needs of our generation in mind. I've got a small selection of that range to try out for you and I'm going to be using them for the very first time so you're going to get my honest first impressions, what I think of them as I apply them to my face for the first time. This is the finished look. I'm filming the intro after filming the tutorial. So now we're gonna go back to my makeup free face and get started. So I have a few options here as to what I could put on my face first. I've got the Beam Team Hydrate and Glow, or the Skin Glowing Balm, Flash Illuminator, or the Pore Vanishing Stick. Now as my skin is fairly oily and glowy, I'm going to go in with the Pore Vanishing Stick first. Um, so this is in a really gorgeous little silver container, not sure what the correct word for this is, silver bullet, with the blue cobalt stripe around the top. It's kind of like a paint splatter which you see all across all the packaging, including the outside packaging, kind of bringing that Estee Lauder blue throughout the range. But this is a pore vanishing stick. Hopefully it will just do what it says on the tin and make my pores blurred. Hopefully it'll have a bit of a mattifying effect as well. Um, and it looks like it's got a little bit of maybe skincare in the middle, it's got this dot in the middle which makes me think that has got some extra benefits in there. So I'm going to swipe this over my cheeks and on my chin which is where my pores are most visible. So immediately I can see that it does have a mattifying effect, it's got rid of the shine from that cheek so I'm just going to go ahead and blur that over my other areas where my pores are quite large. I don't have too bad pores on my forehead but because it's mattifying, I'm just gonna swipe it down there as well. So that's given me a really nice mattifying base to start the makeup, and next I'm going to use their Skin Glowing Balm. This is Makeup with Pink Peony. I love Pink Peony, I don't think I've ever used them in my makeup before. Sometimes I do steer clear of glowing products because, as I said, my skin is fairly oily, um, but because I've used that mattifying pore minimizing stick, I think that's okay. Packaging on this is really sleek and simple. You've just got this glass, I wanna say canister, but maybe that's not the right word again. Um, and I really love this handwritten Estee edit down there. And then you've got a pump style, so let's see. Probably have to give it a few pumps. Um, this might actually be a little bit too pale for me, so I'm gonna have to bronze this up a little bit. I don't have, I don't think I have any bronzer from the range, um, so maybe I'll just add some of my own. But I'm just using my fingers to apply this onto my cheeks. I'm not going in with too much product at the moment because I'm not sure how much you need. And then I'm going to use a new Clinique makeup brush just to blend this in, starting on the chin. Actually, the colours blended quite well, surprisingly. I thought it'd be too pale, but that seems to have blended with my natural skin colour quite easily. Coverage on first impressions, it's not too heavy. I would probably compare this to like a BB cream, um, but it's blending very, very easily and spreading very well. Feels nice and moisturising as well, which is really lovely. I'm really surprised how well this is blending in with my skin colour. I honestly thought, having had this on the back of my hand, that it was going to be much too pale, so maybe it's one of these very clever foundations that actually adapts to your skin colour. I think that's really important if they are aiming it at the kind of like early 20s generation because we're all grown out of the stage of having foundation marks and tide lines. Nobody wants to have different colour skin on their face to their neck so it's really nice that they've got that really adaptable shade range. Okay, so I think that's fully blended now. It's given a really beautiful glow. Hopefully the camera's picking it up. I am using natural lighting to give you as true um, as true a picture as possible. But I think in the mirror it has given a lovely glow but without being too shiny. I probably would later on in the day, depending on how this lasts, add a bit of powder to my cheeks. But for now, I'm actually really pleased with the finish of this and that's coming from someone who normally does not go for glowy makeup because of my oily skin. Really like how this is blended. It looks really, really healthy. So yeah, really good first impressions of this foundation. 
I've just seen that I do have a flash photo powder in my little Estee Edit collection. Oh, by the way, I read earlier that it's called the Estee Edit because that's what Estee Lauder's blog was called, so I thought that was quite a cool little snippet. They're obviously really in tune with the whole blogger generation, um, so that's a really nice little fact. So this here, as I said, is the flash photo powder. I think Kendall, I read um, or I watched her interview with Fleur de Force, said this was one of her favourites. So this should be quite a nice one for applying if you're taking lots of photos, good for in the summer, if you don't want to like cake up up your makeup but you need to not be shiny for all those flash bulbs if you're going for any weddings or any special occasions so I'm just using a fan brush to apply this because um, I find that's what applies these kind of products a lot more lightly and again just going in on those areas where my makeup needs setting like my chin and by the way as you can probably see it's a blue colour so that's really good at neutralising um, any redness on your skin I think actually it's normally green that neutralises, but it seems to be doing a good job anyway. I have a bit of redness on my cheeks, and this seems to have made it more neutral. Weirdly, the foundation is getting or sitting quite thick um, above my lip. I'm not sure if it's because I didn't blend it properly, but just a small note. It does seem to have kind of settled there a little bit, so I'm just going to blend that in a teeny bit more. Next, because I do not feel human without my brows done, I'm going to use the Estee Edit More Than Brows. This says Define, Line and Shade, and I've got the shade 03 Light Brown. It does look quite dark, and usually I don't like using anything quite so thick as this on my brows, so I'm going to go in with some really, really light strokes so that hopefully I don't get too much of a bold brow from this. That is really surprising how fine I'm able to get these strokes. I think I need to invest in a sharpener that's the right size for this because as it is now, it's able to produce really lovely light strokes. It looks a lot darker on camera than it is in real life. Okay, so as you can see, I now have very defined brows. I probably will pick up a slightly lighter shade of this to see if I can get it looking a little bit more natural. That whole process probably took less than a minute, so really good if you just want to whiz on some brows super, super quickly. Although I'd say probably not the best product to use if, like me, you like to really do really do, you like to really draw in those fine individual lash hairs. I think if you have naturally good brows and you just want a little bit more intensity to them, then this would be really good, but personally I prefer a slightly more fine product, although having said that, looking in the mirror, they do look really, really good. So next I'm going to add a bit of shape to my face, I'm going to grab a bronzer from my collection um, and then use the Estee Edit blusher. Keeping it all on brand, I've grabbed my Estee Lauder Bronze Goddess Bronzer, this is just a very very easy to love bronzer for summer um, and I'm just going to take that on my Sigma brush add a little bit of shape into my face on the hollows of my cheeks you guys have seen me doing this a million times so I won't go into it in too much detail just the areas that the sun naturally catches I'm sure there is a bronzer for the Estee edit but if I do get one of those I'll let you know how I get on with it but for now I'm just adding that colour back into my face with this one and here we have a blusher called the Barest Blush, and I've got shade 04 Ember Glow, which I think is going to be a really nice warming colour. I really like the packaging of this one. You've got the silver um, stripe packaging from before, but this one's got a white paint splat, which is a little bit more chic. And then inside the paint splat is replicated in the golden shade on the blusher, and then you've got this beautiful kind of warm, very browny pink shade, which is my favourite blush shade ever. It looks really lovely in autumn as well as summertime, and I'm going to use my Zoeva, oh no, this is my Sigma Duo Fiber Powder Brush F15, just to really, really lightly stroke this. I can see already that the gold is spreading across my brush very, very easily. So I'm just taking a tiny bit because I'm not sure how intense this is. And I'm going to apply that to the apples of my cheeks. That is a very, very strong colour. You do not need to pick up anything on this blush at all. And I can see immediately it's given me a bit of highlight as well, which is really beautiful. So you can see on this side I added far too much that first time, so literally just touch the blush onto the blush because it's very highly pigmented. And then on this side where I've got a little bit less on the blush, blush, I can't say blush and brush, got a little bit less on the brush on this side and it's given a really lovely, quite a flushed kind of look. Um, but really, really natural with that bit of highlight as well. I think actually I've got too much so I'm just going to use a powder brush just to blend that in a little bit. So next up I'm going to do my eyes, and I've got a couple of options for doing my eyes today. 
Firstly, I've got a couple of the shadow sticks, and these are the kind of roll-up stilos with a crayon of eyeshadow within them. I've got the shade 09 Spiced and 03 Gilt, both of which are absolutely beautiful shades, and hopefully they'll blend really beautifully as well. And my second option is this, which is the Estee Edit Eyeshadow Palette. This one is specifically the Kendall Palette. I'm not pal Palette. Palette. I'm not sure if they're bringing out um, ranges for other celebrities or anything like that, but this is um, the one that's signed by Kendall Jenner. So inside this little sheet says the black light transformers and I think these two shades here you can use them um, at the very beginning and it really helps to brighten the shade of the eyeshadow that you go for. So you've got some neutral shades in here, a nice kind of pale peachy shade, some gold, some even some bright purples and some darker shades as well. Seeing as we are going for quite a glowing look I might as well continue that on the eyes so I'm going to use this golden shade as my base to see how that affects the rest of the eyeshadow and I'm just taking that on a really fluffy blending brush. So it's very shimmery eye shadow but it's not giving too much colour and more just that shimmer so it'll be interesting to see how this looks when the other eyeshadow is applied over the top. And I'm going to intensify that colour with this kind of champagne shade up in the middle here. So this one has got a lot more colour pigment to it, it's really given my eyes almost a pinky champagne colour and I really really love this one, really nice for summer evenings and it's got a very subtle glow to it, a nice subtle shimmer. I'm going to bring that quite high up onto the brow bone because I want to apply the shadow sticks onto the actual eyelid. I'm going to start with the darker shadow stick and I'm basically going to scribble this all over the eyelids for a really easy, just like five second makeup look. Annoyingly that first few seconds has made the pencil break so it's no longer as sharp as it was before um, so I'm just going to get rid of that excess bit and try and be a little bit softer this time. It's not quite as buttery as other shadow sticks I've tried in the past, um, it's more kind of sticking the product on my lid so I think I need to blend this in with my finger before I go any further. I'm actually not too sure how I feel about this, it's not blending quite as nicely as other shadow sticks that I've tried, hopefully I'm applying it right, it just seems that with my finger um, it's kind of being a little bit uneven on my eyelid, I'm not sure if you can see there's quite a lot of colour condensed together in one area, um, but where it has blended evenly it's really beautiful so I'm going to stick at it because I really want this to be quite a sheer colour um, and more even than it is now. Okay, it seems to have set in the position that it's in now, from like a few centimetres away it looks really really good it's just when I'm up close I can see that it's not perfectly even but the effect that it is given giving from far away I really like so I'm gonna go ahead and do the other eye hopefully I'll have learnt from my mistakes and blend this one in a little bit more quickly so I'm really pleased with how the second eye came out I did that much more quickly I didn't even speed that bit up at all for you guys that is just how quickly I applied it I did it much more softly so that when I applied it with the actual stick it went on more smoothly um, and the colour, I feel like it's not going to be budging anywhere because if it's dried that quickly on this eye I don't think there's going to be any colour transferring onto the lid throughout the day so fingers crossed I'll leave a little note along here how it did last but I've got really good feelings about this one I think if you prefer shiny sparkly shades then the eyeshadow kit is the best option but for me personally because I do prefer them slightly more subtle I think I'll be using the shadow sticks a lot more frequently as I said, I've also got the lighter shade, which is um, the shadow stick in 03 Gilt, and I'm going to use this while it's nice and sharp. I'm going to go a lot more gently this time so as not to break it. I'm going to bring that in the corner of my eyes and also underneath, which I find is really good for brightening the whole eye area. So this has given a really lovely golden shimmer underneath the eyes. It's very subtle though, so nice for like more of an everyday look. But for this look, I'm going to go for something a tiny bit more dramatic. And I'm going to use the Estee Edit High Low Stylo. And this has got a highlight pencil in one end. So I'm going to try using this on the corner of my eyes to see if it's a little bit more dramatic for this look. Okay, so the crayon has had a much more intense colour payoff. Not sure if the camera's picking it up, but now my eyes look really lovely and glowy, very fresh and much kind of bolder and healthier, especially in the inner corner. So if you're a fan of that really bright eye look, then I definitely recommend the Hilo Stylo. Um, as I said, I have shade 01 light medium and I use the highlight section just on the inner corner. 
This is a product I'm slightly scared to try because it is so ginormous. This is the blackest liner, it's actually called that, and it's this really chunky felt tip pen liner. I've actually got um, Nouveau lashes on at the moment, so I haven't been wearing eyeliner for quite a long time, so I'm going to be really, really delicate and draw this along the lash line so carefully because I don't want to be scrubbing away and potentially risk my lashes falling off, so let's see how we get along with this one. Surprisingly easy to create a really fine line considering how chunky this liner is. Hopefully you can see the difference between one eye um, that's done and the one eye that isn't. I just applied the tiniest, very thinnest line to my lash line because I really don't want to go too overboard with this. So I'm going to try and do the same on this eye. Not the easiest to create cat flicks, let's just say, but when it comes to lining the actual lash line it's doing a really good job. I think I'm going to leave it without the cat flicks just because I don't want to risk ruining it but really really impressed with how that went on so fine and I guess because it's a chunky pencil you can create a much bolder look but that's not really my style so please I can actually use this one. Next I'm going to go in with the lips, I'm not going to put on any mascara, I'm not sure if there is mascara in the range, I definitely don't have any um, but because I've got the lashes on as I said I don't feel the need to wear additional mascara so I do have quite a selection for the lips so let's have a look what we want to use to start with. So here's my selection of lip products. They all look the same pretty much. Um, oh actually no they don't. Yes they do. I can't decide. They're kind of like an optical illusion. So I've got three plain silver ones which I think are the actual lip colours. I've got a blue ombre one. Um, this one is, let's have a look, this one is a bright red colour, very nice for kind of summer parties, um, a very bold shade but not what I'm going for today so I'm going to leave that one. That's the shade, um, oh, Mattified Lipstick in number 10, Killing It. And then this one in the blue uh, packaging, I'm really intrigued to see what this is, I don't know if it's going to be a blue lipstick. Okay, it's a bright yellow lipstick and I think, if I remember correctly, this is used to brighten the shade that you wear on top. So. I'm going to try using this, but first I'm going to put on some lip liner. I've got a really beautiful nudie shade, very Kardashian Jenna style, um, and this is the Barest Contour Lip Crayon in the shade In The Flesh. And it's a really handy roll-up pencil, so no annoying sharpening. I really love using lip liners with any lip combination. I just find that they help your lips look a lot more perfected. So I'm going to start by lining just outside my natural lip line with this one. I bet you probably can't even see that because it's such a close match to my natural lip colour but it should help me to create that more defined shape so next I'm going to go in with that yellow lipstick I have no idea if this is going to actually come out yellow I'm kind of hoping it doesn't um, or if it's going to be more of a neutraliser for my lips but let's see oh my god it's yellow <laughs> it reminds me of one of those ski lip balms Okay, you definitely would not want to leave the house just with this on. It's a very strange yellow shade. Um, I'm hoping it is going to be really effective at brightening my lipstick. It's not gone on terribly smoothly. Fairly, fairly patchy actually. Um, patchy actually. I have got reasonably dry lips, so I'm not going to hold it against it. Um, but I'm hoping that it will have quite an impact on how my lipstick looks. So let's try adding a lipstick over the top of this beautiful look. <laughs> And I've got three shades to choose from here. Um, first one is 01 Miss You, which is a very beautiful, kind of corally, peachy pink colour, and I feel like this is going to be the one I'm going to go for. Um, I also have 02 In The Flesh, which is, again, a very browny pink, very Jenna style lipstick, and then an even darker one which is 04 The Barest So Bare, so you've got a really good range of neutrals. This one I feel like is a very beautiful fresh spring kind of colour, so I'm going to go ahead and apply this now. I really like how it's got such a point at the top, which means that I can apply it really neatly around my lip shape. If round lipsticks are round, I just find that they get a little bit more messy, so let's see how this applies on top of the yellow. At the moment my lips look kind of like a sunset ombre shade, very strange. Okay, so I think the result of the yellow is that it's made my lips a lot more fluorescent. I do like this colour, it's almost kind of Ibiza beach party um, nudie orangey coral, although it's not exactly the look that I was hoping for today, so I'm actually going to go and wipe this off and try applying the lipstick by itself and that would be quite a good way to compare, um, but first I'll give you a little close up. Ok, 
Okay, I'm back now and I have removed the yellow lipstick and lipstick on top of that and reapplied it. And I have to say, I'd much prefer it without the yellow. I feel like it was just not sitting um, very comfortably on my lips. It feels much more moisturising without having the yellow underneath. And the colour is a little bit more dull, but I think the lipstick that I chose um, is a very bright lipstick anyway. So perhaps you just don't need the yellow on that one. But I might try it with some of my lipsticks um, that I own already from other brands and see how it alters the colour with that. I feel like because I'm quite bronzed, um, this colour is just a little bit too pale. So I'm actually going to remove this and start again with one of the more nude shades. So my lips are completely bare now and I'm going to go in again with the lip liner and then I'm going to apply a more nude lipstick shade. So this one is so much better, it's a really beautiful, very natural looking lip colour so if you like to have something on your lips but you don't want it to be too obvious then this is a really nice one. So I use the shade O2 in the flesh um, and in the flesh so I guess it's meant to look very very natural and it's super hydrating as well, I'm really surprised how balmy this feels on my lips so it's one of those that's really really comfortable. As you guys probably know I got a brace recently, not wearing it at the moment, um, but when I'm wearing it I do crave really comfortable lipsticks so this is going to be becoming a very regularly worn lipstick I can tell so second attempt at the Estee Edit lipsticks I'm much more pleased with. And that's actually everything that I'm going to apply today I'm not going to go overboard and slap things on my face just for the fun of it but definitely keep your eye on my snapchat to see my first impressions of the bits of bobs which I haven't shown you in today's video. Overall really really impressed with the collection there are so many products here and all of them they seem to have really thought about like the functions and what we actually want from a product so that healthy glowing look, comfortable products to wear and let me know in the comments below if there are any particular products in the range that you really want to see more of a detailed first impressions of. So I hope you guys have enjoyed this video, do give a thumbs up if you have, let me know which are your favourites and I will see you very very soon, bye!